These are 101 weird Minecraft hacks you need to try. Starting with, here's how to use a boat to get through walls. Strange as it may seem, if you row your boat into a corner like this, then no matter how solid the wall is, whenever you dismount, you'll actually be ejected to the other side of that corner. So if you're looking for a sneaky way to get into your enemy's base without breaking any blocks, then five wooden planks is enough to do the trick. Just make sure when you leave to get rid of the boat, because nothing's gonna look more suspicious than a few pixels worth of planks poking through the wall. It's a dead giveaway for sure. Instead of using a painting to hide a door, use it to hide a chest, or rather the pressure plate to hide that chest. See, as this user shows, we can place our painting supported onto a pressure plate, which then can serve as the redstone input to open up this piston to reveal our chest. And sure, paintings do tend to look a little suspicious, but I doubt many people are throwing items through them. So while your friends and enemies might wonder why it's there, they probably can't figure out that this is the reason for it. Instead of using fences, try out these trap doors. Since after laying out the trap doors on the floor like so, when you flip them up, we as the player are able to jump over them, but any mobs that we learn in can only jump in and not out. And this is because of the way the AI is coded, they don't actually recognize it as a block that they can walk past. And there you go. That'll be a fence that they'll never escape, whether they're passive or hostile. This pillager will never attack me or my friends. And the reason for that is a bow. Silly as it may seem, if you get the villager inside of a boat and then sit in the front, then it'll keep trying to shoot you with its crossbow until eventually the crossbow's durability runs out and that pillager is essentially pacified. I mean, he won't sound the friendliest, but he's not gonna hurt you either. Giving you a cheap way to rehabilitate the raider. Granted, it'll take a lot of time for the durability to run down, but anger management's an ongoing process. Here's how to make your shield 10 times better. To do this, all you need to do is hold up your shield and then go through a portal. At which point, when you reach the other dimension, the game will still think that you have your shield up, but you can sprint and attack like usual. Meaning that essentially, we can PvP without having to take any damage. Oh, and don't worry, this doesn't just work in the nether, because if you do the same going towards the overworld, it also works there. Really, the only thing that's gonna ruin this glitch is if you right click with anything other than your shield. But as long as you keep that one drawback in mind, the rest of this should work plenty well. Trust me. If you've ever cared for a plant, then you know that these suckers need a ton of light. But apparently, we can use that to our advantage. We can actually use this for a system that can automatically harvest crops when the lights go off. You see, the way that this works is that the game requires a certain amount of light level for the crops to be planted. So if we just switch off the redstone lamp, bam, everything is harvested in an instant. And then, since farmland isn't a full block, we can just have a set of hoppers underneath and collect the stuff just like that. Sure, this does share a lot of similarities to water-based systems, and while it might not be a full replacement, you have to admit, it looks pretty cool in action. It might not look it, but this is one of the fastest ladders in Minecraft. Thanks to the unique hitbox of the dripstone spike and the different stages of cake, you can travel up to nine blocks vertically in one block of width. Pair this with a horse's ability to automatically breeze over a single block, and you can find yourself traveling up to nine blocks in under a second. And if you're dedicated enough and you build one of these from bedrock to build limit, that would only be about 40 blocks wide, which makes these horses seem a lot more worthwhile, even if you do have to use some weird blocks to do it. At some point, I think we've all wanted to be an astronaut, but without a billion dollars in the bank, that's a pipe dream for most of us. So that leaves us two options. We can either sit around and mope, or start to work in Minecraft science. As it is, we don't have much in the way of rocket fuel, but what we do have is TNT, and a lot of it. Which means if we grab a whole bunch of TNT minecarts, we can pack enough of these suckers into a small space to launch us right towards the moon. Though, so maybe pack some blast protection and totems on dying to do this. Otherwise, both of you and your dreams will go up in smoke. For any fans of The Shining, I'm sure you're well aware of the Here's Johnny Easter Egg in Minecraft. That is, if you name a Vindicator Johnny, then it's going to go absolutely insane against all the other mobs around it. And while this is a fun little reference, we can actually use it for way more than that. You see, by putting this Vindicator's aggression into a mob farm, we can actually have it auto-kill the different mobs that we breed. This does make for a pretty brutal system, but the results are hard to argue with. And as long as you yourself manage to keep a respectable distance between between Johnny, he's gonna go right to his work and leave you be. In Minecraft, it's often easy to accumulate your fair share of junk. And while throwing that stuff into a fire is a fun pastime, what if you really want to get rid of something? Like, say through some chance you came across a particularly cheaty piece of netherite. Well, if you don't have a cactus on hand, then there is one option that we tend to neglect. Items or entities, just like you and me. And that means that these things have a kill switch. So if you take an anvil sky high and drop it on a thing of items, it'll delete the stuff from existence. It's almost like we're creating our own kind of item execution system. But if you really want to get rid of your friend's diamonds, then this will do the trick and then some. Using waterlogged leaves, we can see through walls. And here's how. If you're on bedrock, first dig a canal of water, fill it up with leaves, 
and then go beside them and till the soil with a hoe. And by doing this, we get exactly one pixel of window to see through the world. And it would seem that the reason this works is because the game doesn't render blocks that the player can't see. And since the water inside is supposed to be invisible from all sides, it's not actually rendered. Though it doesn't recognize that we tilt the soil next to it, so we do get a sneak peek through the glitch like so. I think every kid's wanted to be a spy at some point. I mean, why else would there be so many different spy items available at book fairs? It's supply and demand, folks. So while I'm not saying you'll become a full James Bond in Minecraft, this might at least put you one step closer. Secret messages are a classic bit of spy technology, but even when you use the message command, that isn't always secure. So if that's the case, let's turn to invisible ink, otherwise known as nether hyphae. Now laid out on the ground, these don't look like much, but give your friend a map and now it's a hidden message. No matter where you go in the world, you've got yourself a private messaging app, and better yet, the server mods will be none the wiser. Sometimes in Minecraft, it can be easy to forget that your actions have consequences. So to give your friend a quick refresher course, then how about we design a trap with that karma in mind? Now, I don't know about you, but on my world, exposed target blocks are a rare sight, meaning that as soon as someone sees one, you can guarantee that an arrow is going straight for the center. But this time, instead of a bullseye, they'll be treated to Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And in this case, that reaction is a poison arrow headed straight for their torso. Is it cruel? Well, it's hard to say they didn't ask for it. And <laughs> maybe now they'll think twice before they act. Powered rails are a lot of fun to ride around in Minecraft. But if you don't have a lot of gold and redstone, they are pretty costly. So if instead you're looking for the poor player's option, then there's no reason you shouldn't put a saddled pig right in a minecart. Just hop on the back of one of these things and soon enough, you're gonna be putting pork power to use. Getting you going just about as fast as powered minecart rails anyway. Making this a pretty solid way to get around, even if it is a little silly looking. But who knows, maybe that's just another plus. It's really just depending on how you see it. Just make sure you're ready to put in the time to learn how to use one of these things. Stop building your cobblestone generators like this, but rather build it like this. As you'll notice, by using a waterlogged stair instead of a water source block, we get a few benefits. Namely, you can't accidentally create obsidian since the water doesn't flow out of the back of the stair. And even though this has been marked on the bug tracker, it's been open for years. So I'm not that worried about it getting patched soon, if at all. Nobody likes waiting. Whether it's waiting in line, waiting for files to download, or a video to buffer, nobody likes their time wasted. Which largely makes nether portals a pain to deal with. In survival mode, not only do you have to wait for the whole sickness animation to play out, but then you've also got to let an entire other dimension load on the other side. It's not exactly speedy, to say the least. But if you've got some items, we might be able to cut that down. You see, by using nether portal chunk loading, all it takes is throwing an item to the other side, and then all of a sudden, it'll do all of the loading for you. So going forward, maybe take the time and hit the Q key. Might just save you some down the road. Entity cramming is an often forgotten rule of Minecraft. For those who don't know, the idea is that if you get more than a set amount of mobs in a one by one spot, then the game is going to apply steady damage until that number drops below the threshold. But unless you're doing some insane breeding on your cows and sheep, most of us don't even brush up against this. Though it could be surprisingly useful, particularly through minecarts. In this example, we've got a whole bunch of hopper minecarts that can fully squish the nether star out of a wither. I'm being serious, even one of the biggest bosses of the game could get hopelessly crushed by the limitation, proving that sometimes the greatest weapon is just some well-kept guidelines. Minecraft staircases should be straightforward, but as we've shown in the past, there are plenty of weird staircases that we can put to use in our worlds, and this is no different. What might look like a random mix of blocks and foodstuffs is actually the fastest walkable staircase in the game. The truth is that the way that these hitboxes are laid out, it's just so that we can stand in the middle and climb these staircases seamlessly. And sure, a proper spiral staircase would look much nicer, but if you want the speed to climb up to your mountain, this is hard to beat. Horses aren't that popular for travel, which is fair because they're quickly outclassed late game, but they might still have one thing going for them. See, in the bedrock version, we're able to place blocks under us in a speed bridge like so. But what's better still is that this even works on horseback, meaning with the right speed, we can even speed bridge on a horse, which is wild to see. And even if it isn't as practical as an elytra boost, I've got to admit that this is a lot of fun to mess around with. So if you're looking to bring your items across a gorge, maybe just grab a pack mule and do the trek like so. Here's why you should break your end portal. See, by using this trick, we can smash the end portal frames and turn our portal into a fully functioning duplication machine. And really, this isn't just for sand, but it'll work with any gravity affected block. So if you need a bunch of concrete powder, gravel, or whatever, this works quite well. Just make sure you have a collection system on the other end. Otherwise, it'll be a mess when you go through. TNT duplication machines are a great thing, but they are a glitch, meaning that eventually Mojang plans to remove them. And when that happens, it's gonna be a lot harder to explode things in the overworld. But there might 
might just be a new avenue to future-proof our big banging bombs. While a lack of legitimate sand farms makes it tough to get renewable TNT, respawn anchors are a different story. Yeah, thanks to piglin bartering and witch farms, they're farmable, albeit a little complicated. But the trade-off for that hard work is a much larger explosion. So whether you're trying to excavate a mountain or take care of one of your enemies on the server, these might just be your next demolition dream. Here's how to wall jump in vanilla Minecraft. See, with a little bit of skill and good timing, you can jump and place powdered snow underneath you and use that to climb up a wall. It does take a bit to learn, but once you got that down, you'll be scaling walls left, right, and center, all without leaving any evidence behind. Instead of using full glass blocks to change the color of your beacons, try using a glass pane instead. The way that it is, a glass pane fits exactly inside the beam of the beacon, leaving you with a seamless color change. And what's more, the color changing in the job edition is additive, so you can keep adding on those different color panes and make colors that aren't even a part of the original 16 that were given, which will allow you to create some of the crazy color palettes that you see on Reddit. And you could do it all for cheaper than you would with a full block of glass. Anyone who's ever messed around with a mob farm knows this problem, because after all, even though it is great to have the mobs up on the spawning platform, we do eventually want to get them down to, well, their inevitable demise. And in a lot of cases, water buckets were great for that, except if you're in the nether. You see, in that dimension, we got to get a bit more creative. And luckily, gas sweepers are just the thing for that. As it turns out, the large hitbox of a gas is perfect to just sweep other mobs off the spawning platform. So if you're willing to get the hands, arms, feet, and legs of this big thing inside the vehicle at all times, this is definitely the way you can make your mob farms in the nether. When you're idling at a farm in Minecraft, there's not a lot to do. I mean, most of us would just go off and do something away from the screen, but if that's out of the question for you, then we'll have to find some other way to be productive. Now to start, get out a book and quill. And no, this isn't to take notes or anything. That book's actually our project. You see, the way that Minecraft scrolls through different pages, it's actually possible, in some weird way, to make flipbook animations in the game. Is it limited? Sure. But remember, someone remade Star Wars and ASCII art, so the possibility is pretty high. So if you're going to be killing the time anyway, then you might as well make yourself a magnum opus. Redstone timers can be a bit complex to build, and while sure, there are comparably simpler options like hopper clocks and such, if you're really looking to make a no-brainer redstone clock, then this is your candidate. As you'll see, our solution here is gravity, and a violation of the Geneva Convention. By having a mob stand on top of some turtle legs, there's a set amount of time before they crack. So given that, there is a theory that you could form some kind of timer using turtle eggs. Is it immoral? I guess it doesn't seem the nicest, but if you're really looking for a timer that's light on redstone, this does do the trick. So maybe just keep this behind closed doors and don't let your visitors know how the sausage gets made, all right? Stop using fireworks for your elytra. Instead, try a dolphin. No joke, if we take after this user's example, all we have to do is attach a lead to a dolphin, start swimming in the ocean, and then once we build up enough speed with the dolphin's grace potion effect, we can go straight from swimming right up into launching into the sky. And while that's ridiculous enough on its own, it's funny to realize that we're not the only one that takes flight. So make sure that you and your dolphin buddy land in somewhere safe. Shields are a very useful tool, but once you're holding one of these, speed is the last thing on your mind. Though the bedrock edition might have an interesting solution for that. Here, when your friend holds a shield, we can punch them multiple times and still get the knockback, which has led some of the community to discover a technique like this. Here, we can alternate shield usage between the two players and essentially create a ladder of sorts. No joke, you could even use this to jump six blocks high in some cases. And not to mention that using this properly could also help you to clear horizontal distances as well, making these shields a lot better for traversal than any of us thought. This composter doesn't look like much, but it's actually my base. Don't believe me? Here, I'll show you. If we just step inside and throw an item right into place, a hidden hopper minecart will trigger and cause this redstone machine to push us right into place. And bam, hidden entrance. And while it's hard to notice what's happening from above, this Reddit user's post makes the mechanics a lot more obvious. Just make sure you place this in a village where it makes sense for there to be a composter. Otherwise, this hidden base could just stick out like a sore thumb. Anyone who's ever put together a sweet berry bush farm knows that you gotta keep the foxes away from it. But if we put it in a system like this, we can actually use that mechanic to our benefit. Wouldn't you know that as soon as that sweet berry bush is ready to harvest, that hungry fox will scout it out and get it ready back down into your hopper minecart. Which is great and all, but it it just makes me wish that sweet berries were an actual better food source. Because when they're just this easy to put together, there's no reason I wouldn't want to put one of these in my world if it was practical. But in the meantime, unless sweet berries get a boost, I think it's going to be the foxes enjoying this more than us. I use a ladder when you could use a door. Odd as it may seem, all it takes is placing a door in a two block hole like so, and we can flip it back and forth to climb ourselves out of a hole. Though why you'd be carrying a door instead of blocks seems unlikely. But this might still be a perfect setup for any kind of escape room concept in the future. 
future. I think we've all known that one person who learns how to MLG water bucket and then uses it non-stop. Like, I get it, it's a practical skill, but I don't understand using it to get down from a four block drop. So all right, if we're both fed up with it, then why don't we teach them a little lesson? But the question we'll have to solve is, how do you stop water? Because really, unless you're in the nether, there are not many ways to stop a water bucket. Unless we take it up a step by using this upside down step. Since half slabs can be waterlogged, when they try and land, they'll be greeted to their bucket emptying and no prayer of a clutch save, leaving you victorious and them totally confused about what just happened. Getting in elytra is a great thing, but getting to the end cities, not so much. And unfortunately for us, it's always tougher to get an elytra when you don't already have an elytra. So to save yourself the headache of building across the end void gaps, why don't we get a bit more technical instead? See, with the help of a flying machine, we can build a vessel perfect for the journey to the outer islands. Now, granted, stopping or turning the ship might be a bit of a problem, but with the proper planning, this could save you from placing thousands of blocks while searching. And if you ask me, I'd much rather take this passive option compared to that. If you're having trouble finding the dead coral for a TNT duplication machine, don't sweat it. Just use glass. No joke, even though it's a less popular way of performing this glitch, all it takes is a setup like so using observers to make an equally effective TNT duplication machine. And you might find this could be even more effective on a skyblock world, where coral isn't exactly close by. And in any case, it's just nice to be able to build one of these without having to need silk touch right away. Turtle eggs don't seem to do a lot. Like any baby, these things are quite the liability until they grow up, but that might just be our biggest asset. Since these eggs crack under the simplest bit of pressure, we can make an extremely easy trap. Just sneak one of these little guys under a thing of carpet, and then, as soon as any zombie or ne'er-do-well comes by, they'll be met with quite the surprise. One jump and that's it, and they'll start tumbling toward their doom, and you'll have one less hooligan to worry about. And now you don't have to worry about the egg or the fool. So if you got the silk touch on hand, this might just pave the way for the perfect possibility. Villagers in Minecraft are not a very aggressive bunch, which can make them very fragile to different attacks from mobs. However, using dispensers like so, we can actually give enchanted armor to villagers, and they'll use it. Which means that even though you don't see it, this villager's actually fully equipped with enchanted netherite armor using thorns. But really, where you're gonna get the best results from this feature is by mixing your villagers together with Frostwalker. Put them on a large body of water and get ready to see the new hit show, Villagers on Ice. And better yet, it's gonna mean that the next time the pillagers come through for a raid, they're not gonna know what hit them. Oceans are a common obstacle in Minecraft travel, but luckily, boats offer up an easy solution for that. However, these simple ships could really use an upgrade. So if you're looking to become a proper captain on the seven seas, maybe use your boat's second seat for a boost. Like, maybe bringing along a witch to offer up some extra artillery support. Because, luckily for us, their potions throw in such an arc that you'll never get hit. Or, maybe you're trying to move house. In which case, a llama brings along some extra storage slots for your belongings. And really, whichever you choose, I'm sure it'll be better than just having some lonely trip across the deep blue. What's the difference between this campfire and this one over here? Well, where there's smoke, there's fire. And where there's not, there's string. Sure enough, by using two strands of string on top of the campfire like this, we can block any kind of smoke coming out of it, letting us still use this fuel efficient solution without giving away your location. Think of it as the inverse of the hay bale, turning your smoke stack into a smoke lack. Look, at least the trick's better than that pun. When you're heading away for a long trip in the nether, it's always a good idea to pack yourself a snack. This time, I'm actually asking you to go vegetarian, or dandelions to be more specific. You gotta eat a flower. Now look, I get that these don't seem the most appetizing out the gate, but they'll actually make a surprisingly handy ingredient. Because while you've been going around making different mushroom stews to fill up in the nether, you could have just added this ingredient and way buffed up the beverage. Since flower type can determine the effect of suspicious stew, using dandelions actually gives you some pretty solid saturation. So if you're gonna make the bowls anyway, then why not just bring along the special spice and make all of it worth it? If you wanna be a pro at Minecraft, then you gotta be able to MLG clutch. But if your reaction time's like mine, then that's disconcerting. It's just not gonna happen. So a simpler option for us slow pokes is to use chorus fruit instead. Strangely enough, the random teleport feature is actually actually predictable, or at least predictable enough for us to use. The way it works, it will always teleport you to solid ground. So if you're in midair off a of Shulker's levitation effect, then you can just chomp on one of these and be teleported right back to safety. And look, I'm not gonna lie, it maybe doesn't look as cool as a water bucket save, but being able to survive a deadly fall, I think that's good enough for me. If you're not prepared, the wither can be a tough opponent, especially on harder difficulties. I mean, at the very least, with 300 HP to its name, taking one down isn't usually a speedy experience. Or, so you thought. As it turns out, while we've been wasting our time using swords, tridents, and axes to slay the boss, there's actually a much stranger option for victory. By crafting yourself a chunk of these fully powered firework rockets, then that's all that you need to beat the beast in roughly 10 seconds. Though I should know that for safety, it's probably best to spawn it under a bedrock fountain like so, 
much, but after you do that, then you can just simply hold down the right click button and get ready for the hard earned nether star. If I wanted to fill up this hole with water, it would take hours of my time. Or instead, I could just use columns of ice blocks like so and do it in a few minutes. Sure enough, with the way that the game fills up water, if you build up your ice pillars in a setup like this and then break them all with a high efficiency pickaxe, it'll flood this hole in a matter of seconds, which is so much better than having to wait around in a pool and do this all by hand. That much is obvious. Ice boat highways are a popular form of travel, especially when paired with a nether hub of sorts. But while these do make for great speed, they're not always a joy to build. So if you and your friends are tired of riding an unfinished highway, you could always try this. With the right amount of slime blocks and basalt, we can make a fully functional ice tunnel building machine. Now, obviously the redstone trickery on display here is enough to make your head spin. And frankly, I wouldn't even know where to start building one of these. But playing in a proof of concept world like this can definitely show off how cool the dream could be. And I think that's worth experiencing. Nether portals are a dream for travel. Surely, being able to teleport anywhere in the world makes transportation a breeze. But going into the nether isn't always a fun trip. So what if we can make portals strictly in the overworld? Well, thanks to enderpearl stasis systems, that is, in some way, possible. After throwing an enderpearl into place at the different locations, all we need is chunk loaders and redstone to connect your overworld portal network. Really, if you've got the time to lay out the redstone, the possibilities with this can be pretty impressive. And once that's figured out, it definitely makes for a snazzy way to get around your base. Now, let me set up the problem for you. You've got a farm where you gotta push mobs into the nether portal. However, as soon as they're there, you can't use something like water to actually get them out of the way, so you're kind of stuck. That is, unless you put any mob inside of a boat in that nether portal. You see, this system utilizes the different boat and mob collisions to do so, and it'll actually push them when you come through the portal, making this a pretty useful thing for when you're trying to move mobs around or using it as a part of your farms. Using this design, it's simple, it's automatic, and most importantly, it's weird, which honestly, I'm fine with all three of those. While Bedrock Edition lets us tie a rope between two fences, Java Edition isn't as nice. Which means that in a lot of cases, we don't get to use these ropes as really cool decoration. That is, unless we get creative. Because as you can see, if we tie a lead to a fence and then the other end to a mob like a chicken, we can actually make some pretty cool builds. I mean, look at this. Rope bridges will never be the same again after finding this out. So until Mojang decides to get the rest of us on Java on par with the other people in Bedrock, this is the best way to do it. And I think we'll be tying up chickens with string for a long time being at that rate. Throughout history, Minecraft has had its fair share of cannons. Whether you're caving holes with a TNT launcher or creating a nuisance with a sand cannon, there are plenty of different ways to launch projectiles in the game. And as it turns out, the 1.17 update offers up an even newer addition to that category. As I'm sure you know, these dripstone blocks are not to be messed with. But better still is that we're able to launch these using slime blocks and pistons. Even with a small one like this, the momentum that we add in here could be just enough to make the option lethal. So while everyone else is worried about the differences between between stalactites and stalagmites, you'll know that their best application truly is as bullets. I wanna show you all my new secret base, and if you can't see it, that's kind of the point. But as soon as we fly down, you'll be able to see that powdered snow can work perfect for secret aerial entrances, since we can fly through powdered snow without losing our speed in the elytra. But as you'll notice from this example, the light can still shine through the powdered snow, so make sure not to do this at night. Or if you do, at least light up the rest of the mountain so that it's not as obvious. This is a high-speed sorting system, and this is how we use water log sea pickles to make it function. Now, as you'll notice, the unique hitbox of specifically two sea pickles placed like so allows for a water source block to align the items perfectly along the edge of the ice block, meaning that we can still use the ice and water streams for a high efficiency system without worrying about any kind of item traffic jam. And you can see from this comparison, this system would not work without these two sea pickles, which seems a lot more useful than just smelting them into some lime dye. Minecarts are a quintessential bit of Minecraft transportation, but while we've all tried to build a roller coaster in the past, I doubt they've looked anything like this, though that might have been our mistake, since as you can see these new methods can get some crazy speed. For some reason, a curved track like so allows the cart to rocket along the path, and while the non-powered version trails off at a certain point, this Goldilocks option offers both speed and longevity. So if you're trying to build the next travel system for your underground subway, maybe give this thing a go going forward. One of the key parts of speed running is a quick ender dragon fight. I mean, how are you going to reach the top of the leaderboard if you can't one cycle this foe? But while most of us think that beds are the fastest way to beat the bad there's actually a much stranger option. Leave it to the crazy minds of the Minecraft technical community to make up this monstrosity. The TNT Aero Launcher, more affectionately referred to as the Rail Cannon. 
Being able to deal roughly 1200 points of damage in a single blow, this machine can one hit the Ender Dragon. And in fact, the only hope that anyone has of surviving this thing is a totem of undying. But if you can't cheat death, then this will take you to a swift one. Why do we have so many cauldrons? Well, in Bedrock, these are actually incredibly useful for pixel art. No joke, by placing a bunch of cauldrons next to one another and then dyeing the water inside, it gives you full control over the color palette. And honestly, I think the dark outlines of each cauldron adds to that 8-bit aesthetic. But this is definitely expensive to do, so you might only want to try this in creative. Unless you've got yourself an iron farm that works as well as this one. And folks, the secret here is all thanks to the unlikely block, the campfire. Now, the way that this works is that we have an iron golem killing mechanism that uses a small spawning platform and a campfire so that the golem can't move away from the campfire and it'll constantly get hit. And thanks to its small size and low cost, it could be made really early into your world. So while it's not as efficient as something like this designed by Tango Tech, much like using a campfire versus a blast furnace, it is a great thing to have when you're starting out. Killing a bunch of chicken with an enchanted diamond sword is a lot of fun. But if you're a busy person, you don't have a lot of time in your hands to do that. So luckily for you, you're actually able to hire a bit of help and pass off that job to a fox. Just like that, they'll take your sword and put it to use against all those different chickens, giving you a fully automatic chicken farm. Anyone who's ever messed around with the technical side of Minecraft is well and familiar with the concept of a mob switch. That is, you get a bunch of withers in a cage, make sure they don't despawn, and no new hostile mobs are going to be giving you trouble. It's a great system, but it's definitely costly. So a simpler and safer option to do is instead having a zombie villager mob switch. You see, if you trade with a villager and then zombify it, this will make them both unable to despawn and also count towards the mob cap. This is actually a great way to put zombie villagers to use and in turn actually keep all other villagers safe. Who doesn't love roller coasters? No one I want to hang around with, that's for sure. And it's because of this mutual love of roller coasters that I'm sure we've all tried to set up a thrill ride once or twice. But the real test is what your friends think, though it's pretty boring to just set them off and wait till they get back. So to make that journey a bit more inclusive, why not upgrade your ride? You see, since minecarts can pick up entities and boats happen to be entities, you can essentially make a two person cedar minecart to ride the rails. So not only do you get a goofy ride to go around in, but you can also build up some surprising propulsion by rowing the boat, which I think we all can agree are pretty great things. Water elevators have become a staple in Minecraft builds. After all, it's quite handy to have a seamless elevator to go from point A to point B, but they don't always fit in with the aesthetic. So to solve that issue, what if we didn't have to see the elevator while using it? As strange as that sounds, it's actually possible. By using honey blocks like so, their hitbox is just small enough to let us ride the water elevator, but not actually enter the bubble stream. So if we put something like item frames and map art on the outside, we get an invisible elevator, all without sacrificing our build's look. Sometimes you don't have the heart to say something to someone's face, but that doesn't have to keep you from sending the message. By just waxing particular parts of their copper wall, then you guarantee that eventually they're gonna get the message, which clearly could lead to some pretty innovative prank ideas. And I'm sure that your brain's already lit up with all the different designs to leave at your friend's base. So while I don't exactly endorse writing mean things for your friends to find, I can't doubt its efficacy. Meaning if you've got the honeycomb on hand, this might just pave the way for your perfect crime, or at the very least, a perfect punchline. Minecraft servers are bound to have their share of lag, which can sometimes be annoying, but also allow for great things like this. See, with the way the connection lag works, we can use the rubber banding in some way to slingshot ourselves forward. So if you have the wings needed, you can ride that connection current to get some impressive momentum. All that needs to happen is that we hit the ground, double tap space, and then keep a sine wave motion of sorts to keep going. And like that, we have the capabilities to bounce across the Minecraft scenery. So if you played enough Super Mario World, that cape feather practice is finally gonna pay off. Here's how to easily explore the ocean. Since while it's tough to see what's underwater from above, if you're sitting in a boat and then move your camera angle slightly down so that it clips into the water, there's a perfect angle where the game doesn't darken what you see below. And there you go, you'll be able to easily see all the blocks illuminated beneath you, giving you a quick way to find any kind of shipwrecks that lie below. And that could be helpful for a speed run or for the next time that you're trying to find a heart of the sea. Horses are a lot of fun to ride around, but as soon as you take one to a body of water, you know you're out of luck. I mean, if you're ankle deep, you're fine, but that's the most you're gonna get. Unless, of course, you manage to luck out during a thunderstorm, because then you can get a skeleton horse. And folks, with one of these skeletal steeds and the right amount of potions, you can actually travel underwater riding a skeleton horse. It's a weird form of travel, and I definitely don't see it happening much, but really, how cool does it look to just go down in the depths of one of these things? If nothing else, just take a screenshot of yourself and put it on a metal album. If you've only got yourself one bucket of water, but you still need an infinite water source, just wait for nighttime. Since if you kill a skeleton and get some bone meal, then you can use that to create seagrass, which if you grow seagrass inside of flowing water, it'll turn that into a full water source block. So 
Whether you're playing in a desert on a skyblock island, or you just don't want to craft another bucket, a bit of bone meal will solve your problem just the same. Instead of growing your sugar cane on dirt or sand, here's why you should use mud instead. See, mud isn't a full block in size, meaning that items can pass through it like soul sand, but we can also grow our sugar cane on top like normal, and that allows us to make this really simple design for a sugar cane farm that's completely lossless, which means we won't lose any of our sugar cane gains this way. Every crop broken is one that we profit off of, and that lets us create an easy design that can stack in all three dimensions. Simple as that. The Frostwalker enchantment is a hard one to justify. After all, adding this to your boots means you're locking yourself out of some more valuable choices like Depth Strider. But say you've already got a pair of shoes with the enchantment, then why don't we make the most of it? Now, the two key ingredients that we need to add here are Riptide Trident and a Rainstorm overhead. Then, once we've got those, we've got the right conditions to slip and slide our way across the ocean. Simply spam the Riptide Trident and we'll launch ourselves right across the ice highways. And hey, this might even allow your friend to follow behind in a boat, meaning that both parties can enjoy the ride. I think we all can agree the channeling enchantment's pretty great. For one, not only is it fun to summon lightning like your last name is Odinson, but that very lightning allows you to change and manipulate different mobs. So when you're fed up with typical mushrooms and you're looking for a change, well, bam. It's great, but obviously all that lightning can get pretty dangerous. So if you're trying to do your magic without all the pain of electrocution, maybe try this. You see, by placing down an item frame, all you have to do is zap that and the job gets done the same way. Except this time, no one's getting hurt in the process. Which is nice, because really, there's no point in converting a corpse. Few things in Minecraft are truly unbreakable. I mean, even bedrock can be broken in some form, and that's THE unbreakable block. But while we might stand a chance of breaking blocks when we stand on steady ground, it's a different story when they're on the move. Through the help of flying machines, it's possible to make a proper working flying cage trap to take your enemies right up to build limit. But what we really should mention here is that by using blocks such as honeycomb that can't be easily mined, they'll be in for a bad time. As you can see, as the blocks keep moving, the break time keeps resetting. So if your foe doesn't have the proper kit to break it down, they'll be stuck on the one-way journey with no hope in sight. In life, you got a few essential pairings, the sun and the moon, peanut butter and jelly, and if you ask Bugs Bunny, rabbits and carrots. The way that rabbits work in Minecraft is that they'll try to come near you when you're holding a carrot, which means that with a system like this, you can actually build a rabbit carrot detector for secret entrances. It makes for an extremely weird concept, but if you're willing to carry around a couple extra carrots, those might come in handy if you forget your keys inside the base once again. I guess the only ones who don't benefit here are actually the rabbits, because after all that hard work, they're still not going to be able to get the carrot. Foxes, as we know, are a pretty versatile mob. And while they're great for harvesting in different farms, the only pesky thing is that they like to sleep. And while that would make most fox-powered farms pretty much unusable, we can actually solve that by keeping another mob nearby. You see, if we have something like a chicken, for example, next to this fox, then it'll just keep doing whatever we want to and never sleep as long as it's near. But if after all the work is done and you finally want to let your hard worker get some rest, just kill the chicken up top and it'll go immediately to sleep. And you know what? For the kind of graveyard shifts it's been putting in lately, I think that's completely well deserved. Plants can really liven up a Minecraft build, which is why you'll see plenty of different pro builders using this in their base. But while the shrubs and stuff definitely add to the aesthetic, they're not exactly cooperative. And trust me, it's going to be quite the pain just having to plant and replant this one thing just to get it to the right height. So if you're tired of your crops getting a bit too big for their britches, then don't sweat it. There's actually a way to tie this together. By placing string along the top of certain plants, then you can actually make sure that they stay at that height for the rest of history. No joke, all you need is one piece of thread and it works works like an Everstone. All evolution stops dead in its tracks, and you don't have to worry about it any other way. Anyone who's ever tried to build something organic knows that it's very tough to get builds to look natural. Or as natural as they could look in a game made out of blocks, I guess. But for a thought experiment, say that you want to build an island in a creative world. How do you go about it? Well, if you're like me, then you're looking for the easy way out. And in that case, I'd like to delegate this job to our good friend's grass mycelium. Set up both of these on a plain dirt canvas, and essentially, you can watch a Splatoon turf war take place in real time. And then, then, after the battle is done, just replace the mycelium with water, and like that, you've got a fully formed island. Or, at the very least, a very solid foundation that you can build off of. Endermen aren't always the easiest to kill. And while the teleporting might be fine in a desert or a plains biome, when you're fighting them in the end, the last thing you want is to get sneak attacked. So, to cut their magic show short, all we need is five planks and a plan. After we craft a boat, all we need to do is place that right down next to an enderman, and that sucker will be locked right into place. No joke, as long as you don't break the boat, you're free to slice, dice, and slay the foe with no hassle to you. 
I mean, they do still have pretty massive arms, so I wouldn't recommend getting too close to the bash zone, but as long as you keep you and your axe out of harm's way, then I think you'll find this works pretty well. Don't have a compass? Well, just use a crafting table. No joke, as this user shows, if we just open up the crafting guide inside of a crafting table, we can see the compass sprite. But the thing is, this still updates real time, even if it's just in the crafting book, meaning we can save ourselves the iron ingots and redstone and instead just use four wooden planks for a cheaper compass. Instead of just heading off to bed and hoping that your villagers make it through the night, you should let your villagers know by ringing the village bell that you placed ever so conveniently next to your bed. That's right, the bell isn't just there to notify you about all future uploads, and thank you, by the way, but it can also be triggered by redstone. Meaning with a simple pressure plate setup like this, we can ring the bell once at night for the villagers to run into their homes, and then once again to make sure that they stay in their houses a little longer in the morning. That way, any zombies that are outside can burn away, and we'll all be safe indoors. Anyone who's had the misfortune of stepping a bit too close to a bed in the nether knows that these suckers can pack quite the punch. And while that can be useful to kill dragons in the end, it's not as applicable for getting rid of your friends in the overworld. So if you're having trouble getting your enemies through the portal, there is still another avenue. Well, yes, bed explosions are pretty deadly, they aren't unmatched. As it goes, using an end crystal or respawn anchor in the overworld gives you an equal amount of force. And on hard mode, that's gonna be a lot of damage. But look, I won't lie, getting one of these set up isn't nearly as easy or cheap as a bed. But late game, it might just be your perfect crime. Elytras are a great form of Minecraft travel, but that's not news to anybody. Though without the proper fireworks, this great invention becomes a failure to launch. But it turns out that all we need is some claustrophobia and we can shoot off right to the skies. See, Minecraft has something called entity cramming, which happens when enough mobs are packed into a single space. And while there is a limit to this, if we use just one mob less than that in a one by one space, we can get some serious propulsion. Apparently, all the little nudges from the various mobs adds up to be a punch of speed for our elytra takeoff, giving us the tight squeeze needed to reach the horizon. If you have to travel over slime blocks, don't walk, but sneak instead, since by using the swift sneak three enchantment on your leggings, we can go nearly double the speed of walking, which granted still isn't that fast, but it's a lot better than the alternative. Alternative. So silly as it may seem, if you find yourself getting chased, maybe build a bridge with slime blocks instead so you can keep some distance between you and your pursuers. Okay, hear me out. Pufferfish have a lot more going on than you think. While sure, most of us might only care about these things for the water breathing potions we brew, that's not the whole picture. Actually, that's about the only positive they offer up, because the rest of the time, they're a tool for evil. Don't believe me? Well, let's put that small hitbox to use, and I'll show you. By tucking a bunch of these poisonous pests underneath the trap door, we're fully capable of making a sneaky floor weapon. So if you want to keep some of those house guests from going out of line, then just throw a couple of these into the floor plan and the message will be clear. I don't think any of us want to get on a bee's bad side. For one, they're just so adorable that you probably don't want to hurt one anyway, but that's not to mention that they can also carry quite a stinger. So to change their offensive capabilities to defensive, how about we make ourselves a bee army? With this swarm, all it takes is an enemy to be hit by one mistake and the damage will be done. And folks, if you can believe it, these things can even take down the wither. Now sure, you'll need a lot of them and it would probably help to splash them with a strength 2 potion, but the point still stands that this buzzing battalion can wreck through anything you throw at them. And maybe next time, they'll want to stay on your good side. The new nether stem blocks are a great addition, except for when you're trying to smelt something. Unlike regular logs, these can't be used as fuel in a furnace. They don't burn to a flint and steel, so why should a furnace be any different? But this intentional piece of game design might just have an unintentional workaround. If instead you take those logs out of the furnace and into a crafting grid, then we can craft them into sticks, which by themselves would work as a fuel source. Source, but we can actually do one better. Folks, by crafting those very sticks in the ladders, now we're actually getting the best bang for our buck when it comes to smelting. Which, I've gotta say, is a big improvement when the alternative was not smelting anything at all. Unless you're using mods, Minecraft doesn't really experiment too much with turrets. I mean, you've got dispensers with arrows, but those are pretty limited in their direction. Really, if you're trying to defend your base from any intruders coming too close, you gotta build a couple of guardian turrets. It only takes one look at these to see just how menacing these things can be. I mean, you step too close, Close and boom, you're targeted on and it's gonna be a world of pain coming your way. Making the guardians from Minecraft way more like the guardians from Zelda, turning it into way more of a Hyrule castle. And personally, I love that kind of thing. Redstone is one of my favorite parts of Minecraft, but the circuitry isn't exactly a looker. Now that doesn't discount its personality. I'm sure what's on the inside counts, but to our builder friends, it's all about outward appearances. So in that case, how about we find ourselves a happy middle ground? I wasn't aware of this until recently, but you can actually throw down 
item frames atop a redstone dust. Meaning, if you add in a colored map of your choice, then you can effectively cover up your tracks. Now, obviously, if you're using a bunch of these item frame and map combos, I do have to warn of some potential lag. But if you got yourself a beefy computer, then I'd be hard pressed to say this isn't worth a shot. Here's how we use a pig for x-ray hacks. Now, that sounds crazy, but I'm not joking. If you get on top of a saddled pig and then clip your head into the middle of some blocks, then once you're inside the roof, you'll be able to see all the cave systems light up above you. But worth mentioning is that you have to ride your head into a tunnel of slabs for this to work. That way you'll be inside a transparent block, which will keep you safe, and that'll cause the game to glitch out and actually let you see everything above you. And if you have that on lock, this should be a quick way to get to the next cave system. Villagers can be a great asset in your Minecraft world, but regardless of how respectable they are with emeralds, these fellows are not the most commendable when it comes to the overworld. And even though their AI is a lot more similar to sheep than Steve, they're nowhere near as easy to corral. So if you two are looking for a trading hall that doesn't have to turn into a kangaroo market, this might be the time to sweeten the deal. Honey blocks, as I'm sure you know, are great for keeping different mobs and entities stuck in place. So the next time that you build a villager's desk, maybe just tuck one of these under the floor mat. That way they won't be able to jump out of dodge and you'll be able to keep them still for the entire shift. Or if you're not a fan of loud noises, these azalea bushes can also keep monsters at bay. Because of the way that the mobs pathfinding AI works, they can jump over azalea bushes. But obviously we can do that just fine. So if you're looking for a prettier alternative to the carpet and fence trick, this hedge maze is definitely worth a shot. And thankfully, these don't automatically grow into azalea trees, meaning that this fenceless defense is here to stay. Planting trees around your base can really bring a build together, especially if you design some of them custom. That is, until your friend comes by and decides to break the bottom two logs of the tree trunk for a craft. And now, all you got is a bunch of eyesores. Well, to solve that problem, let's teach them a one-time lesson that the Lorax would even approve of. By setting up an observer system like such, we can have it so that when they break the log, the chop gets recognized, and then an explosion takes care of the rest. And better yet, by using TNT minecarts in this way, the detonation gets to near instantaneous levels. So, whichever log they take from you, we can make sure it'll be their last. Honey blocks are clearly a useful tool. Whether you want to keep your villagers in place, mobs out of your base, or a flying machine through space, these do the trick just fine, but their sticky qualities can just as easily be turned to the dark side. You see, with the advent of lava cauldrons in 1.17, we can pair these two concepts together and make a particularly sinister trap. Since honey blocks make jumping so difficult, when we throw one of these under a lava cauldron, suddenly, the player's no longer able to escape. And with that, this seemingly harmless block becomes one that you gotta look out for. So, if you're trying to feel like a Bond villain, then this might just be your next interrogation technique. Pufferfish tend to scare really easily. One step too close to this thing and boom, poison. It's a nuisance when you're swimming around the water, but as soon as you put one of these in a pufferfish player detector, it does a lot of work. Rest assured that anyone who stands way too close to this, whether it's you, another other player, even mobs and armor stands, this thing will detect them. And then from there, you can use that redstone signal for whatever your choice is. Be that a secret entrance or, more likely, a secret trap. It's really startling to see how much damage you can do with one of these systems. If you're gonna be settling down in Minecraft, then mob proofing is an essential part of your base. And while placing down a couple hundred torches is great for getting rid of things like skeletons, creepers, and zombies, as anyone knows, the light level does not matter when it comes to phantoms. Even getting something like a mob switch doesn't turn these off, so how do you get rid of them? Well, if you're looking to enlist a feline force, then you can actually use cats to keep away certain mobs. Just like that, any phantoms or stray creepers that try to wander near your base are gonna be immediately deterred. And plus, it makes for a lot cuter of a defense than all the other options I've seen. Here's how to raid desert pyramids so much faster. Just use TNT. Since TNT has 100% collection, all we need to do is grab the TNT out of the pyramid trap and then use it to explode the chest like so. And from there, we can hide out in the hole, take barely any damage, and then grab all of the loot in a matter of seconds. And this is also great for any speedrunners that are looking to grab resources like water cobblestone out of a village. Just make sure that you use redstone to activate it instead of a flint and steel, since otherwise the villagers will take damage because of you, and they'll raise their prices out of anger. Pigs and saddles are somewhat of a laughing stock when it comes to transportation, but what they lack on the ground, they more than make up for in the skies. It turns out that with the right technique, we can tie a lead between an elytra and a saddle pig, and essentially create a two-person ride share. Is it practical? I've got no clue, but clearly it's a sight to see. So if you've got both the leads and pigs to spare, it's well worth your time to try this out on the server. And if you start from the right height, you might just clear some serious distance with your
your friend in tow, which I think is just fantastic. Any Minecraft veterans will know that in PvP, the retreat can be just as important as the attack. So to help out in that defensive strategy, you might just have the solution. See, in Bedrock, if you start sprinting and then backpedal right before your screen finishes zooming out the FOV, we can start to move backwards at the same speed that we move forwards. And at that point, we've got the perfect skillful tactic to keep us active while leaving the fight. And you can even swing your sword while doing this, letting us continue to knock back oncoming enemies. So next time you're getting chased, this might just give you the upper hand, or at least a solid escape plan. Normally, when you want AFK at a mob farm, you gotta use an auto killer. And while those are great, they don't get you any XP. Except, of course, if we throw man's best friend in the mix. Sure enough, by putting a dog right down here at the bottom of the farm, we're able to have it kill all these skeletons for you to get loads and loads of EXP. One great use I've seen of this is putting an AFK skeleton EXP farm right next to your tree farm, which overall makes this a really solid design to use in your world. Just make sure no protection or thorn skeletons happen to get in the mix, because if that happens, you might have to feed the dog. It'll take a couple hits. If you look at an endermite mob, it doesn't seem like it has much use. I mean, it's meant to be an annoyance, except the only ones that hate endermites more than us is, of course, endermen. And for that, we can put these endermites to good use. As soon as they were added into the game, using a stationary endermite to aggro all of the endermen down to a bait and switch has worked really well for these kinds of farms. Just like that, the burning hatred leads them down to a shallow grave. In the past, we had to worry about things like redstone and pistons to get the job done, but here, just put one of these little workers to go, and your machine will be producing, and then some. Minecarts and water don't mix. Or at least, that was the case prior to the 1.17 update. But since then, the Caves and Cliffs update has allowed us to do a lot more in Java to mix these minecarts and rivers like so. Which is cool to have parity with Bedrock, but that version still has one major plus. See, the minecarts over here don't lose momentum while entering bubble streams. Meaning, if we line a nearby lake with soul sand like such, we can bounce our cart right across to the other side. It's definitely a ridiculous way to travel, but who knows, it might be worth adding into your next Splash Mountain remake. Although snow golems try their best, they don't exactly make for the best defense. I mean, unless they're fighting a blaze, these fellas don't even do damage, just knockback. And that's not exactly cutting it for our purposes. So, to make these frosty friends a bit more ferocious, we need to crank up the heat. And for that, I'm actually being serious. In Bedrock Edition, if you put fire in front of their projectiles, then we straight up mix the fire and the ice, get something they gotta fear. And from there, all you gotta worry about is keeping the things safe. But as long as you use something like honey blocks to keep baby zombies from jumping in, then these should keep your villagers safe and secure. All while breaking the laws of physics as well. If you've played on enough Minecraft servers, then you're definitely aware that some people can be griefers. So if you want to give those annoying players more of a run for their money, you can actually trap an Elder Guardian, and boom, you got your own form of anti-grief. Look, it's not perfect. If they have a milk bucket, they're going to be able to get past it, but if they're not prepared, they're going to have a hard time busting into your base. And hopefully that frustration that they feel will be enough to get them off of your lawn anyway. Especially if you trap the thing in obsidian so they're not able to break through, this makes for a pretty solid way to both annoy and hopefully ward off any greedy players. Here's how to take your boat from the ocean right at the sky limit. Since in Bedrock Edition, if you place your boat on top of a pad of slime blocks and then jump on top of it, then once we finally get inside, there was so much potential energy locked in that boat that it'll shoot right up into the sky, giving you a neat party trick to show off to your friends, or who knows, it might even be a cheap way to get an elytra launcher. Getting music discs in Minecraft is kind of a toss up. Either you find them in a chest or you spend way too many nights trying to get a skeleton to shoot a creeper dead. Both work, but there's actually a simpler option here. You see, if we actually take that same skeleton and take it right underneath the creeper farm, then we can use that undead mob to get us all the different kind of record drops that we need. And since building a farm like this is mainly gonna produce us some creepers, that's gonna be a lot of music discs coming into your chests. Putting you one step closer to getting that full music disc collection and the skeletons one step closer to redeeming themselves. Look, I'm sure many of us are curious creatures. It's just human nature, which means that if someone sees a chest out and about, they're gonna wanna open it. And if that's the case, then this might just open up the door for our perfect punishment. Now, to pull this off, we'll need our chest, some signs, and a TNT to top it off. Since TNT is essentially a redstone activated gravity block, all we need is an input from a trapped chest and that'll put this all in motion. They pop it open, the signs break around them, and all of a sudden that sandy floor leads them straight to their doom. And hey, why not even throw in a sign to cover up the trapped chest front? That way, it's even less detectable and even more deadly. Bubble elevators are a great tool to have in your world, because if you're looking for speed from one point to another, you'd be hard pressed to find a better option than this, which makes them a staple in plenty of players' builds. And that's where this idea comes in. As notice, ender pearls aren't the only thing that these things can keep in stasis. Other projectiles such as arrows work as well. So if you fire a bunch of instant damage arrows along the top and then keep that chunk loaded, then as soon as they come up to the top, they'll be met with quite the rude
Rude Awakening, which takes their elevator to the top floor and turns it right into a stairway to heaven. Bad traps stick out like a sore thumb, which is why if you see a random pressure plate out in the open, most of us know not to step on it. But that's the whole point of this. You see, we want our victim to expect that it's trapped, break the pressure plate, and then the real trap goes in motion. The item is then sucked up by the hopper minecart, goes into a real hopper, and then a comparator sets off a signal, and the rest is history. Now, while you could be more cruel here by adding in more TNT minecarts, I think this actually could work really well in a rigged desert temple. That, folks, would be a surprise for sure, and one that's likely to leave them with no items to their name. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, alright?